Hey, welcome to another video. I just got my Chaos 850 back from the dealer. Uh, one of the latest stop rides from Polaris was due to the P85 primary clutch. So I got a brand new clutch put on. It has all of its warranty updates done. New handlebar hooks, fuel filter update, and so on. There was a list. Uh, this sled is for sale. So if you live in Southern BC or Southern Alberta and you want a wicked sled for a pretty good price, uh, shoot me an email. It's jasoncavill at gmail.com or check the links in the description. I'll have my Kijiji ad ID and the Facebook Marketplace ID. For today though, we're going to mainly compare what's the big differences between the 850 Chaos 165 and my brand new Chaos 9R with the 155 325 track. So let's check them out. So these two sleds are so similar. Part of me is wondering why I actually upgraded when it's basically the exact same sled. So let's check out the main reasons I went with them. Again, there's same front end, same suspension. They look the same. Both sleds have the 7S display on them. That's a huge upgrade. Unfortunately, Polaris charges more for it now than they did a couple years ago but I wouldn't buy one without it personally. It's just, to me, it's a game changer, especially if you're riding with other people in your group that have the display and you can find them on there. Um, for me, it's a safety thing, right? If you're having trouble finding your friend, you can just pinpoint exactly where they are, say they were stuck or maybe they're hurt, go straight to them and help them out. So for 2024, we do get a new brake caliper. I believe the master cylinder is identical, same levers. we got the new hooks, which are really the old hooks. So both sleds have these new bar ends, the hooks. This is the same as they were on the Axis, I believe. With the Matrix in 22 and 2023, they had this sharper, more angular design that looked cool, but was a little dangerous. So here's that new P85 primary clutch on the 850. Brand new, you can see the build date was October 11th of this year, 2023. I dropped this sled off at the dealer on October 6th and got it back just over a month later. Took a bit for these clutches to get to dealers and get them all put on. So this is the team secondary and you can see the adjuster bolt. Pretty easy to set the belt deflection on these. Moving over to the 9R. So for 2024 on the P22 clutch, they added some billet parts, improved strength and durability. They also added this metal shield in case something did happen. If there's some catastrophic failure, they give you a little bit of protection. You can see on the secondary, it's still a team secondary, but they don't have the adjuster bolt here. It's taken out because this primary auto adjusts the belt deflection. You might be wondering about the belt. It is the exact same belt that's on the 850, same part number, which is good in case you had some spares from your 850 change. Another thing I did notice is, notice where this side panel clips in. It's just plastic here. On the 24, they added this little rubber piece where the side panel clips in just to probably make a nicer fit, keep the rattles down. With the hoods pulled off, you can see that we have a different pipe. The 9R says 9R and the 850 says 850 Patriot. You can see the head on the 9R is a blue color, whereas over here on the 850, it's just the standard silver. Taking a look at the muffler, I believe it's identical. Here's a 22 brake rotor and caliper, so that's the old one. And there's that little battery and that same QD2 belt drive system. So on the 24 models, we get the new reversible scratchers. It's supposed to throw up way more snow to help with cooling, which I think is gonna be a big, uh, it's gonna be super necessary for this new 325 track, especially on those harder days. And they have these plastic covers that go on your rails to keep the scratcher from chipping away the paint and gouging out the metal. So I like that a lot. 
Another change I noticed is we're just running a single limiter strap now instead of two. And we have this new rail. So before the Chaos and the Pro had different rail profiles, the Chaos was steeper, more aggressive. Now they have a rail that's just right in between. So the Pro RMK and the Chaos share the same rail. We still have the same Walker Evans Velocity piggyback shocks, which are pretty awesome in my opinion. The Chaos has a lower spring rate on that rear spring to help with weight transfer and get the skis up in the air a little easier. So this is on the 22 Chaos and you can see there's two limiter straps. Here's the old ice scratcher setup. You can see that when you pull the scratcher off, there's a fair bit of paint chipped away from that nice orange rail. A little bit of aluminum missing. So on the 850, when you go to start it, it's typically second pull, sometimes first pull. On the pull cord, it's this white, well, it's kind of dirty now, but that's your standard cable. On the 9Rs, they went with this Cobra cable. I know on 23, it was red, but this year it's black, which is gonna look nice when it's dirty. That red one will just start to look black right away. So far when I've started this sled though, it's been second pull, so who knows. So check out the breakthrough on the older 850. This is the 22. It's grabbing the brake right now, that's it. I can feel the pads engaging. I can feel the pads gripping the rotor. So hardly any movement. I love this setup, it's so responsive. And on the 24, look how much greater throw there is to grab that brake. So it's pretty significant. My first ride on this was just loading the sled and you know, you're supposed to keep your finger on the brake so that you don't ram the back of your truck. And I wasn't expecting that much throw and I, yeah, just took me by surprise. Kind of came in a little hot. Well, let's measure these lugs on the new Series 9 track. So you can see there, Series 9, 325. On the 275, it's called the Series 8, and it's kind of funny. It's written upside down, so you almost might think that the track's on backwards, but that's just the way they did it. So let's compare the actual height of these lugs. So on the Series 8, if you measure from the inside like this, we're getting just under three inches. And if you measure from maybe here, we're at just under two and three quarters. So from the center, yeah, I'm not really sure where they measure from. On the Series 9, if we measure from underneath here, looking at it straight from the side, we're at about three, just under three and a half, just over three and a quarter. And if I measure from here, it's right on three and a quarter. Another thing I've always really wanted to know about these sleds is how much longer is the 165 on the snow than the 155? The track's 10 inches longer, but how much longer does that actually make it? And it's kind of a big deal, especially if you're loading into the back of, you know, short box truck like that. The 165 hangs way out. So let's measure the rail length. So when we compare the 165 rail to the 155 rail, they, to me, look identical up until a certain point towards the back. When we get to the back, the change starts right here. You can see that this slopes down to this little cross member. There's on the 155 when we head back. It goes up. So from the outer edge of this axle piece to the center of the bolt, we're at 18 and a half inches or 47 centimeters. So 23 and 7 eighths of an inch. 60.5 centimeters. I also want to see how much shorter the 155 tunnel is compared to the 165. When I first saw that 155, it looked so short because I'm so used to this 165. And that's not a very long tunnel. You know, it's shortened up, it's tapered. But that tunnel, it's just tiny. It's just a tiny little tunnel. So let's measure them. 37 inches long for that 165 tunnel. Get my tripod through here, set it up, same measurements from the lock and ride. We've got 31 and a half, 31 and a half inches long, so small. 
Okay, quick math. Taking a look at the rails on the 165, they're five and three eighths of an inch longer or 13 and a half centimeters. And the tunnel is five and a half inches longer. And just to be sure, I bumped the ski tips of both sleds just, you done there, Fergus? Just to be sure, I bumped the ski tips of both sleds just up to the door so they're just touching. And I just put a milk crate here. The lugs are pretty much straight back. And the 165 is sitting at 129 and a half inches. With the 155 butting up to the milk crate, we're right at 125. But in the end, we're somewhere between four and a half, five inches longer for the 165. Call it five inches. So overall, the two sleds are pretty much the same. Biggest features I wanted again was that 155, 325 track. Just that much more playful. It has this 9R with the new pipe, the new head, and it actually has a lightweight crank out of the 650. And that is probably the biggest reason I wanted this slide was that lightweight crank. I just wanted that snappier feel, faster revving. Not that the 850 was any slouch. It would rev up fast too and pull super hard. I never complained about the power of that sled. I just want a little more. All right, thanks for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.